So before we start coding with Fast API, let's do the most important step without which you can't continue, and that is the setup. Of course, right in your machine, you need to have those things. So let's go step by step. The first thing you have to check is, open your terminal, now based on which OS you're using, and I mean, we call terminal everywhere now, so CMD terminal, whatever you prefer, open that and check, do you have Python installed? So how do you check? It's very simple, you say Python hyphen hyphen version, and if you see a version there, that means Python is there. Now, I have tested with two different versions, 3.12 and 3.13, it works. If you have a previous version, I would recommend you to upgrade. Otherwise, if you have a lower version, try it out. If something is not working, just upgrade. Okay, that's one. Next, if you want to use the front end, see, whatever front end we saw in the previous video, it's not compulsion that you can run that application with that front end, it's optional. We have another way of accessing those pages. We can use Postman, like your REST client. Uh, we can also use Insomnia, you can use Swagger, and by default, Fast API gives you docs in the format of Swagger. So you can use that. But front end looks good, so you will get that satisfaction, yeah, you have done something, that's the only reason we have that front end. But in case if you want to run front end, uh, you need to make sure that you have Node.js installed, and I have tested with version 22, make sure that you have upper version than this. Uh, I have not updated my node from a long time, in case if you don't have this two softwares, and I'm assuming you have Python because this is the advanced part of Python, so you, should, you need to have that, I will not show you Python. Let's get towards Node.js, and this is this is where you can click on download, and there should be option of this. This is the latest version you can go with, LTS version, you can also go with the current version, and that should work. Now once you have uh, this two, let's see what else we need. So you need this two, done, verified, next. Now you need an IDE, so in my machine I got VS Code, and I already have VS Code open in one of the screen, let me just drag it here. This is how it will look like. I will just increase the font size. And this is where we'll be doing all the work. So make sure that you have Python, you got Node.js. Again, Node.js optional if you don't want to use the UI. Uh, then you need VS Code or PyCharm or whatever ID you prefer. Uh, next, in your VS Code, you need to have Python extension installed. And again, I'm assuming that you have worked on Python before. It's just that if you have not worked on Python on VS Code, uh, you need to make sure that you have this extension. So my, Python from Microsoft. Okay, next, before we do any more configuration in VS Code, now this section of the small part is only for those people who want to run the UI. Now in that case, instead of taking a lot of trouble, what you can do is, in fact, I would recommend you to do this. So on GitHub, you have this particular folder called Frontend in the project, okay? So this is our project. And in this, we got multiple branches. If you can see, we got product with UI, product with DB, product put, delete, and post. So this is our first repository, which we're going to start with. Again, I'm going to type everything except the front-end part. But if you jump to the last branch with products with UI, this is what you need to download, okay? Uh, of course, it, you will get everything, but this is where this is important for us. Now, how do you download? It's very simple. You can simply click here and click on download. Now, why I would, I'm recommending download instead of this uh, cloning is when you clone, you will get the entire project, okay? And uh, when you open, you will get, again, you will get all these files. When you download, what will happen is you will get everything as a zip file, unzip it, and then delete the extra folders, or the extra files here you are only concerned about front-end, okay? Just keep it there. Again, when you clone it, you can also delete all the other files, but it is easier to download from the file explorer or the, whatever you call these days now, what it is called, yeah, file explorer. So you can down delete from there. So download it, unzip it, and get this folder. This folder is important if you want to run the UI. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to download this and I should have shown these steps, you know, simple. So open, unzip, done. This is where you got your folder. Uh, open this, you got only one branch, which is fast API demo products with UI. And out of this, you need just this one folder. Apart from this, you don't need any other, any other things. You can just simply copy this. And let's create a folder for us. I will do that in the C drive. And let me make a new folder. 
and I will say fast API demo recording because I'm, I'm using it for recording. So I will use that because after some time, after a few weeks, I will look at this project and I'll, I will not realize why I have created this project. So let me just create that folder in the C drive and put your front end there. Simple stuff. Uh, now, once you have these steps ready, what you can do is go to your VS code and open the folder. So C drive, fast API, hyphen demo, hyphen recording and open this folder, not the front end, open the fast API demo recording folder. And yeah, you got it. Just say trust and you are in. Now, once you got this project, this is where your front end is and you can run the front end as it is. Uh, in fact, I should be showing that now as well. So let me do that. So I will just go back here, go to your terminal and in the terminal, move to front end. So make sure that you're in the front end folder and if you have never worked on React before, this is a React project. Let me show you some certain things. So this is the main package.json. This, this is where you handle the dependencies, you write the script, when to run, when not to run, how to stop, how to debug, and all the stuff. Now, to run this, basically, you can simply say npm install. Now, we're not running it, we are installing the dependencies. So whatever dependencies needed for this project, because see, if you open this package or JSON, one of the dependencies is React itself. So React is a library, so you have to get that. Now, once you get this uh, dependencies, you have to say npm install so that it will download all the dependencies. And how do you know if you have dependencies downloaded or not? In the front end folder, you will f you will see one more folder called nodes modules. And you can, you can only see that when you have your dependencies downloaded. So we, we can't see that now. When I, once I click on npm install, it will download the dependencies for you. And you can see it is doing it fast. And this is the folder I'm talking about. And as you can see, we got this uh, downloaded and those things are in this node modules. And now it's time to run the node or the React project. So I will say npm start. Now, how do you know it is start? If you come down, there's a script called start. This is what you have to enter and this will start the project. Okay, it says something is already running because I think my older project is still running. I will just close it. Uh, no, I don't want to use another port. Let's do that again. And now it should start. Okay, so it is opening now and this is your project. Now it says fail to fetch is because the backend is not working. Uh, that pop-up came and went because I've set the timer for five seconds, but no products and nothing will work, okay? Even if you add products, it will not work because the backend is not connected. In fact, you, you can also check because this is what you're going to do later. Uh, you can go to console and you can see, it will say something is blocked or the server. Okay, server is not, server is still running on the other project. My bad. Now let's try refresh. Yeah, this is what I was ex expecting. I was not expecting cause error. So it says error connecting or connection refuse. There's nothing on the back end. Cool. So let's make this work. But what other setup we need? So let's go back here and close this. This is the front end part. The next thing we need in this particular setup is the fast API itself. So what you will do is you'll open a new terminal here and let's install the fast API. In fact, we need two things. One, the fast API itself, because that's a framework we are going to use. The second thing we need here is a web server because we are building a web application. REST API is also a web application. And this web application runs on a server. You need, to, you need to get that. So if you have worked on Java before, if you want to have a web server there, we got Tomcat for Node, uh, for React or Node.js, we got Node itself. Uh, for PHP, we got XAMPP servers. So for every particular language, we got some servers. Here, we have to get the web server, and which is called Uvicon. I know, unique name, instead of Unicorn, that went for Uvicon, good. Um, so what I will do is I will get the Uvicon. But before that, I will, in, in fact, whenever you want to install some packages, we use something called pip, right? But we have a problem here. If I install, let's say if I install fast API here, so I will say, pip install uh, fast API is that simple. Just write a command, it will install. The problem is this will install fast API for all my Python projects. So maybe I'm working on AI uh, in some other project, or maybe I'm working on uh, console based application in some project. The moment I say pip install fast API, it will install fast API globally for all the projects. We don't want it. We want fast API only for this project. Now, how do you isolate? So basically in different, uh, languages, they have different ways of doing it. In Python, normally what you do is, if you want to have some packages specific to one project, you create something called a environment, your own env environment. 
or maybe we can call it as a virtual environment. So here we want to create a virtual environment. So how do we do it? It's very simple. You say Python hyphen M and then you specify what you want to create. I want to create a virtual environment. So V, E, N, V, that's what it's called, virtual environment. And you have to give a name to it. You can give any name. Maybe you can say fast API project if you want. Uh, I will simply say my environment because I want to keep it unique. Uh, so my environment, okay? Now the moment you do that, it will create an environment which will take some time, okay? So you can see it is still not doing anything because things are happening behind the scene. And this is what you got. You need to get this folder. If you don't have this folder, something is wrong with the comment or the, uh, the command here. And in this, you got all your uh, environment set up ready. And by default, you will get this too, but we want more. So what we, you will do is, you will say PIP. Okay, now you have to activate it first. Now, how do we activate? So to activate based on what you're using, if you're using PowerShell or a command prompt, you need to use different script. So this is, these are the scripts. For PowerShell, this is a script. For command prompt, this is a script. So for PowerShell, just copy the path. I hope this will work. Oh, it is going for the absolute path. Let me try. Yeah, it worked. So instead of typing, normally you just have to type this much, but absolute path works, then why to worry? In fact, you should be copying the relative path. Yeah, this is what I was expecting, but no problem. We are able to run this script and that's important. Now, how do you know it is successful? It has created the environment. If you see before your path, you should be getting this, your environment name. So your uh, environment is activated. Now, how do you deactivate? It's very simple. You simply say deactivate with the right spelling and now you're out. So this is how you do it. So if you want to get in, activate. If you want to go out, deactivate. Now, let me show you what's the difference of, I mean, how it helps. So if I say PIP list, it will show all the packages installed this in this machine. And if you scroll down, this, it's a huge list. For different projects, we've got different libraries. I just keep adding them. And now, okay, if I activate again, and now let's check, you should be able to see only one, right? But then I want two more. So the, what are the two more? So you have to say pip install, you need to get fast API, and we need one more, which is web server, which is Ubicon. So you will say not Unicorn, Ubicon. And done, when you say run this code, I mean run this command, not code, it will download those things for you, which will take some time. And uh, yeah, so you can see we got all the packages here. So we have dependencies, dependencies, right? So there's some dependencies where, which dependencies are dependent on. Uh, so it will get that as well. In fact, if you want to check, you can do that uh, pip list and it will give you everything now. So you got fast API, you got Ubicon, and we are happy. That's the setup you need. Huh. And I'm tired doing the setup here. So these two things and fast API, Ubicon you need, then you can start with the code. Now, how do we do that code? Let's see in the next video.